This will have to do. Um, that's my cursor. It's down here. All right. Hello, folks. Um, nice to be here. I'm Storm Hack, and I'm an independent contractor from the Netherlands. Uh, I work on uh, Wagtail and Django applications. Um, I'm also a member of the uh, Wagtail core team since 2021 or so. So for a couple of years, uh, the accessibility team uh, I'm also a member of, and currently I'm also uh, the lead mentor for uh, a Google Summer of Code project, and uh, we're working on bringing extended uh, alt text capabilities to Wagtail, but that's not what I'm here for today. Uh, today, I want to talk about um, uh, traditional authentication as we know it, passwords, um, multi-factor authentication, and, and I want to tell, to tell you why you shouldn't be content with that. There is a better alternative that uh, you can use. That's what the next part is about, introducing uh, pass keys and what makes them a better alternative. And at the end, I'll going to show you a quick demo of a package I created to make this easy to integrate into your rectal site. But first, passwords. Raise your hand if you are using a password manager. Can I see some hands? Yeah, this is what I expected. We are a developer audience. We care about security. Good for you. Um, but not every internet user is as security conscious as you are. And here are a couple of pain points that I know exist for passwords. Um, there comes some to remember. And that's why people tend to choose easily guessable uh, passwords. Um, and this all passwords also have the, uh, they are a shared secret. They can be uh, uh, stolen, either through like uh, phishing, a user goes to a phishing site and enters their password there, and suddenly there is a leak in your uh, application. Or maybe they have uh, acquired malware on their uh, computer that is logging all their keystrokes and logging passwords. Um, and because passwords are often reused across sites, uh, this leads to an attack called credential stuffing, where if uh, a credential or a password was previously uh, uh, leaked, then an attacker can try, hey, does this credential match with any other uh, user accounts on other websites? So even if your security is uh, strong, well, because of someone else's uh, uh, website leak and your user reusing their password, you uh, 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 can still be hacked. Uh, password managers, they help in this regard, but they are not universally used. I think, don't think most non-technical people use a password manager or even know what it is. So let's get to my daily annoyance. I'm security conscious, I also use two-factor authentication, and this means I have to enter them. And I have to go to an app on my phone, and I have to look up this, uh, at this uh, six-digit code, and I have to transcribe it onto my uh, computer screen as quickly as possible, because in a few seconds it's going to expire, and oh, I'm too late, I have to re-enter the code. I have to do this daily, I'm really annoyed by it, and that's why I'm giving this talk, why I want to make it better. Um, let's talk for a minute about uh, the common uh, second factor implementations uh, we see out there. Uh, we have the uh, time-based one-time passwords that uh, I think are most common. These are the uh, expiring codes I just uh, uh, told you about. But we also know uh, SMS verification codes is, appears also to be common. But has this ever happened to you? You switched phone numbers, and now you can't receive the SMS code you need to log in because you have a new phone number. Um, next, uh, codes delivered by email. I, every time I have to log into my uh, GitLab account, I get an email with a code, and I have to wait for the email to arrive. 
and then I have to copy the code, go back to the window with GitLab in it, and yeah, it just takes precious time. And yeah, I want to be as productive as possible uh, during my day. Um, yeah, and also somewhat less common, but uh, uh, it's still uh, out there. It's uh, tap to approve. It's by far the easiest way uh, to log in. You get like uh, a notification or a pop-up on your phone, like, hey, is this you? Do you want to approve this? But perhaps this is also the most insecure because you can accidentally approve uh, these prompts. Uh, and sometimes uh, it happens that a user or an attacker is attacking an account and a user is spammed with a lot of uh, uh, approval requests and yet the uh, user isn't physically present so they can just tap approve and then somewhere, somewhere there is an, an attacker uh, logging into the user's uh, account. Can't we do better than this? Isn't there anything else or are we lost? This is where uh, WebOutN uh, comes in. It's uh, a pretty new standard. It's been around for a couple years now, but it's recently uh, gaining traction with uh, uh, large tech businesses like uh, Google and uh, Apple, like they are really digging into this and they are making, uh, integrating WebOutN into uh, their uh, platforms like iPhones and uh, MacBooks and what web out and does, I don't think it is necessarily the a silver bullet to security, but it is a very nice way uh, to make uh, this uh, uh, better, a better user experience. So how does this work? It's based on uh, public key cryptography. So there is no shared secret uh, like a password. Um, a user, they uh, register uh, a credential with your website, and uh, this is where uh, pass keys come in. There is like a very, isn't there an exact definition of pass key, but it's more of like an umbrella term for this uh, standard. But for the purpose of this talk, I'm going to define it as the credential that is registered on the website and that is being used to authenticate. So this is the, uh, the public key pair that is uh, uh, created. Um, so uh, when a user registers a, a pass key, uh, a public key pair is or a public private key pair is created. The private key is stored on the user's uh, device uh, securely, and we, as the website implementing uh, pass keys, we get uh, the uh, public key and we store that on our site along with a reference to which, which user this, uh, this is. Um, and whenever the user wants uh, uh, to use uh, their pass key to log in, uh, we, the server, the website, we're going to send uh, a challenge uh, to the uh, browser that is currently trying to, or the user that is currently trying to, to log in. And we're going to ask them like, hey, uh, sign this challenge with the private key uh, you have, and uh, this signature is sent back to us, and we use the public key we have stored for uh, this uh, user uh, to check that signature. Is this actually a valid signature? If it is, then the user or the uh, person on the other end must be in possession of the private key, and they must be uh, who they say they are. Um, there is an, an additional uh, step to this, because uh, devices, they aren't going to um, make the secret key available for signing immediately. They're going to perform like an additional uh, verification, like maybe uh, the user left their, their laptop unlocked and someone walks along and they try to, to log in. Well, uh, that's where, why the devices, uh, they perform additional verification, but you can use your computer password, or if you have a laptop with a fingerprint scanner, you can use a fingerprint scan. If you have an iPhone with Face ID, you can uh, do facial uh, recognition. And this is not something that we have to worry about. It is, this is uh, implemented by Google and uh, by Apple on their, uh, their hardware, their software. And I think it makes for a really nice uh, integrated uh, experience. So, yeah, the benefits, uh, like I mentioned, uh, no shared secrets. Uh, I think that's a benefit. 
uh, by design, the uh, key pair is created uh, per site, so pass keys are unique. So if the secret key were ever to leak, then it can only be used to log in to the website it was created for. It's not like with passwords that are uh, reused across uh, websites. Uh, so yeah, the blast radius is, is, is less uh, with that. Um, they are bound to a specific domain too, so phishing uh, attacks, they are ineffective. Um, you can't use a passkey to authenticate on a domain it wasn't registered for, like the, your web browser just won't give you the option to use this uh, passkey. Uh, this does have like a slight uh, disadvantage to it because Wagtail is a multi-site and usually uh, users or editors can access the admin through like the multiple uh, domains that are connected to your Wagtail instance. Um, well, the pa a passkey isn't going to work, it's only going to work on the domain it was registered for. So um, if you have another domain, like uh, a different uh, uh, domain, then you, you can't use the, uh, this passkey. So for now, a user would have to register like multiple passkeys, one for each domain they want to uh, log in from, or just access the admin from the same domain always. Um, so let's have a look, look at how registering a passkey, how that works exactly. I just explained it very briefly and it's like magic, but how, do, how does it work uh, exactly? Um, so we begin uh, at the top with, uh, this is always initiated by the uh, web browser. The web browser has uh, an API that we, uh, we can call from uh, JavaScript to begin the passkey uh, authentication uh, process. But before we do that, uh, we uh, request from the server uh, a couple of options, like maybe we uh, uh, expect like a specific uh, security uh, uh, options, and we also have to fetch the challenge we uh, need to sign. Um, and we, uh, we get uh, back the options and the challenge from the server. And um, at that point, um, the, the web browser is going to show a pop-up, usually a system uh, pop-up, like, hey, uh, what passkey do you want to use uh, to log into the site? And it can list the passkeys uh, that are already stored on the device. Um, and the user can select one, and then uh, it creates the, uh, the uh, signature, and uh, we send that back. Uh, the public key, or sorry, the, uh, sorry, the, yeah, the register, we, uh, sorry, I'm talking about registration. I was, um, when we register, uh, we're going to send the, uh, the public key that was created, along with the uh, credential ID. This is also created by the web browser, and it's just a very large, opaque uh, string of, uh, of bytes that is uh, uh, unique. But every time we're going to use this passkey, uh, we get this credential ID, so we can use this to look up the, the public key we have in our database. Um, yeah, and we're going to save this on uh, our site, um, and yeah, that's it, then we have registered a passkey uh, uh, on our website. And after the initial registration, uh, what does the authentication process uh, look like exactly? Well, uh, once again, it's initiated by the client, by uh, JavaScript calling uh, a browser API. Um, and again, we uh, ask the server for uh, uh, some options and the challenge that needs to be uh, signed. Um, the browser is going to show a system pop-up again, like, hey, which passkey uh, do you want to, uh, to use? And it, it sends the uh, credential ID and the signed challenge. And on our server, we look up like, hey, do we have a passkey stored with this credential ID? Take the public key uh, for that and use that to verify uh, the signature. And if it matches, okay, then Log in the user we know is associated with this uh, passkey. Well, this all sounds pretty complicated, right? 
uh, there's a lot of interactioning, interaction happening between the user, the device, browser APIs, your backend. Uh, you have to store uh, data on your backend. You have to do like cryptography, verifying signatures, all complicated. And you're right, it's a pretty complicated standard, but the hard work is already done for you. Introducing uh, Wactyl MFA. It's uh, a package I've been working on for the past couple of months. It's uh, not feature complete yet. Some important features are, are missing because I uh, want to add uh, the traditional uh, 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 multi-factor authentication uh, uh, tool, like these uh, time-based uh, codes, just for the devices that don't have, don't have uh, uh, pass keys yet. There needs to be uh, a fallback. And right now, since yesterday, I'm officially past the proof of concept stage. It's just adding more, a little bit more features now. Documentation, tests, tests are completely wrecking, lacking right now. Uh, and some more uh, uh, polishing. So uh, let's check it out. Let's uh, go to the Wactyl admin, register a passkey, and use it to log in back, or to use it use it to log in to our Wactyl admin without using a password at all, completely passwordless. Um, so let's have a look if I can show my uh, Safari screen. Just up here. There we go. Oh, this is difficult. Uh, let me just mirror my screen quickly. Uh, which option is it? So here we are in the bakery demo. Um, so let's go to our account and go to more actions, manage authentication settings. And here it is, the custom views added by my package. We don't have any pass keys registered yet. So uh, let's get started and uh, register one. So here we get a pop-up from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, Safari from macOS, like, hey, do you want to use uh, TouchCD from my MacBook uh, to log in? And a passkey will be saved to my uh, iCloud keychain. <laughs> yeah, sure, let's do that. All right, let's create it. Let's give it a name, call it my MacBook. And there it is. Well, let's try it. Let's log out of the admin and look what we have here. Uh, Safari knows it has a passkey for uh, this website, so it already uh, prompts us, hey, do we want to use this passkey? Yeah, sure we do. And again, just with a touch of my finger, here I am, logged into Wagtail. So what do you have to do to add this Wagtail MFA to, uh, uh, to your Wagtail project? Well, you have to install it from pip, and afterwards uh, you have to add it to your uh, installed app setting, and um, you have to set uh, a couple of uh, uh, additional settings. One is the uh, uh, RP ID, the relying party ID, and this is uh, the uh, domain that your uh, that a passkey will be bound to when it is uh, created. So this should be the primary domain of your uh, 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 your site. Uh, and we also set the RP name 
because uh, some authenticators, some browsers, they, in the pop-up they show when you want to create a pass key, uh, the, you can add your own uh, uh, business name here, like, hey, do you want to create a pass key for uh, my company incorporated? And one other important thing to set is the uh, allow, allowed origins. I see I made a typo in the setting uh, name, but uh, you didn't notice. Um, and this is uh, a list of uh, origins that uh, pass keys uh, can be uh, used from. Um, and it's very, very similar to the uh, Django uh, cross-site request forgery uh, 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 origins uh, setting. It has a security uh, purpose. And the only other thing you need to, uh, to do I think this is uh, the, wrong, the wrong image in my uh, slide, the same image again, but there was supposed to be an image here of uh, adding uh, the Wagtail MFA uh, URLs to your URL config. And yeah, that's it. That's all you have to do. And this is a default implementation that I think works very well uh, for most if you don't uh, want to spend a lot of time uh, integrating uh, pass keys. Uh, but it's based on another package I wrote, which is more for uh, Django and integrates with uh, the Django OTP framework for uh, managing uh, 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 verification. Um, and yeah, even outside of Wagtail, you can integrate uh, pass keys in your Django application using the uh, lower level Django OTP Webout N library. Yeah, thank you. Here it is. Thank mm -hmm. you.